What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with my All Tea, All Shade, Married to Medicine, Season 8, Episode 11 review. All right, so in tonight's episode, Toya is happy that her kids are back in school and she gets to focus on herself a little bit. Even though she's been going to tennis five days a week, she still feels like she isn't really getting enough time for herself. Okay. <laughs> Even though she's filming a reality show where she gets to go party with her friends and argue, she doesn't have enough time for herself. Okay. okay. So, she don't know why she's not getting along with the other girls. And uh, I'm like, because you've been quite angry. Uh, you've been really snappy. And it don't really mind, bother me none. You know what I'm saying? I like Toya this season. She really hasn't been getting on my nerves that much. Um, I don't really care about her snapping off on Heavenly because Heavenly is a troll and she's the worst. Um, but Toya needs to realize that she's not a victim in this situation. Um Really, nobody is. All of these women are just horrible. <laughs> so, Simone talks to her oldest son, Miles, about his budgeting. Um, he says that he saved about $3,000, and she's very proud of him for that. Um, she, however, does not mind him taking a gap year, but he better have a plan after his gap year is up. He needs to be going back to school, getting a job, figuring it out. Simone says that uh, Miles, however, is oblivious to how good his life has been. And I was like, child, you are preaching to the choir because I'm over here dealing with the same thing. Um, you know, my son, thank God, has never had to struggle for anything. Uh, lights and stuff ain't never been turned off. Gas ain't never been turned off. He's always had clothes and food in his on in his stomach and in his on his back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always made sure to provide for him so he's never really had to struggle or really go through anything and he doesn't realize how blessed he is and I was like boy just wait till you get out on your own and you have the stress of worrying about how the bills gonna get paid how you gonna put food in your belly child how you gonna get back and forth to work how you gonna pay this um light bill where the disconnect notices do like child you don't even know so she says that she wanted them to work have summer jobs you know when they turned 15 but cecil wanted them to be spoiled and i was like okay well cecil since you wanted them to be so goddamn spoiled i would tell him you need to handle this situation then because this is all you're doing um so cecil says that you know miles has rich boy problems and i was like okay you know i feel like it's great to grow black boys and black girls up in wealth um uh, but you still have to teach them um how to work and how to be responsible and how to work for the things that they want and that everything in life isn't always handed to you so anila flat booty ass goes to lisa nicole's store her little boutique so she can get her to lend her some dresses um that she can blog for payment so she says a post from her would be 400 if she wants her to do a try on video it'll be 200 and lisa nicole was like bet girl we can do this um, you know, Anila needs to get her blogging game up because, you know, her husband is looking like, girl, this ain't bringing in no money. Um, I personally wouldn't go to Anila for, uh, fashion tips, you know. Um, I think that'll probably be geared more towards, like, stay-at-home moms or women that are Indian as well. Um, her fashion sense isn't really that cute to me. She gives me very much Kohl's. She gives me clearance section at Costco's. I'm really just not seeing it. Um... So Lisa Nicole sits down with her and asks her what happened between her and Toya. And Anila was like, I feel bullied sometimes by her. And I will agree that Toya does have a, a way of talking to her. She talks to her like she's beneath her, like she ain't shit. And I'm like, girl, this is a grown ass woman that you're talking to. Like she's not your little sister, like ma'am. So Lisa was like, you got to hold your ground, you know, and I was like, you better tell her because you'd have been through it yourself, girl. So Quad calls Anila while they're talking and invites her to an event that she's having at her house. Anila was like, well, I'm here with Lisa. And Lisa was like, hey, Quad, how are you? Am I invited to? <laughs> and there was a pause because Quad don't really see it for Lisa Nicole after, you know, their strenuous history. But Quad was like, I don't know, honey, should I invite you or should I not? And Lisa was like, we can let bygones be bygones and start anew. That's up to you. And Quad was like, I'm going to invite the both of you. And so she was very thankful and was like, I will be there. I mean, 
their fight was stupid in the first place. I mean, they both showed their ass and should be embarrassed by the whole thing. And they really honestly do need to put it behind them. So contestants at her new practice. And I loved her little side ponytail that she had in her confessional, giving me very much Beyonce at the Met Gala. I'm so happy that the Met Gala is returning this year. We're going to get two Met Galas. I'm so excited. Anywho, so um, she uh, gets her edges done by Scott, who does this like filling in process with her blood plasma and shit. It's, it's so scientific and shit. I don't know how to explain it. Um, So... While he's filling in her edges, she complains about being overwhelmed by everything and not having enough time for her own well-being. And I was like, girl, if you and Toya don't sound just alike, I'm like, Contessa, can, can, can like, when do you not have time for your damn self? Everything is all about you. Me, 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 me. I can never do anything for me, 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 me. Meanwhile, I went to school and did what I wanted to do. I started my practice. I did that. I wanted to do that. Like, you get your way all the time and you're still fucking complaining. And this is why I feel like Scott has mentally checked out of this marriage because Contessa is so fucking... um narcissistic like it's all about her like she constantly feels like she's not getting what she deserves and i'm just getting to the point like well bitch you should have never got married and had children if you wanted to be wonder woman because that's what it's giving me and it's getting on my nerves so while she's sitting there complaining he ignores her and she was like are you even listening to me and he finally acknowledges what the hell she was saying and was like i thought when we got this practice it, that you wanted to lease this practice with me that we were good I call bullshit on that. He knows damn well they're not good, but I guess maybe in man talk, he probably thought that there was a step towards them getting to some type of common ground. But I mean, anybody with a brain can see that him and Contessa are not doing well. I just feel like Contessa needs to just be the butch lesbian, the lipstick lesbian that she is dying to be and just get out of this marriage and just be an absentee mama. <laughs> just be an absentee mama that sent in a child support check every month for her kids and go ahead and live her life because she don't want to fuck with him or them damn kids. So she suggests therapy again and he don't want to go and point the fingers at each other. But she was like, I want you to come and open up to me because you never tell me, you know, what your issues are. So in their confessional, the producers ask um, him about therapy and you hear him say under his breath, I'm sick of this shit. Contessa gets mad and was like, he don't want to talk about it. Talk about it. He's sick of this shit. And it's just a mess between them. Like, I just don't see it. I don't see it for them. I just don't. So, um, Quad says that she's invited Toya to her house so she can see how bullshit looks. Um, because that's what, uh, Toya said about Quad's house when she was on live with Cecil. So she, um, she called Quad's house bullshit. <laughs> mind that she was drunk when she said the shit, but a drunk mind speaks a sober mouth. Or whatever the fuck that analogy is. Y'all know I can't never get my analogies right, goddammit. So Simone goes to Groot's house. <laughs> I am Groot <laughs> before the party. And they do this whole color purple thing through the window. And I was like, I really love their friendship. Too bad that they're still not on good terms. But um, I blame Groot. So Toya comes up in the conversation and Groot asks Simone, what is going on with Toya? Like, what's wrong with her? And Simone was like, she's frustrated that she's bought a beautiful home and heavily inquired her dog in her house. So she's wondered if these are her friends if these are her friends why can't they just be happy for her and i was like i can understand that but at the same token you need to take responsibility for what you said on that live like just apologize um for what you said on that live um so toya hopes that they can just get all get back to a positive place so the lady started arriving at quad house and i noticed that she sprayed anila down i don't know if she sprayed the other women because we didn't see that part but i would have been like bitch don't you fucking spray me <laughs> so heavenly says that she likes anita and Contessa was like, well, that's not her name. <laughs> and I was like, this rude bitch. Here. I, like, at that point, how long had you been filming with this woman and you don't even fucking know her name? So, um, Lisa Nicole arrives in this ill-fitting blazer dress child. It looked like she made it right before she came. 
Kari, uh, Carrie and Toy arrive together as the games begin and they walk into the house and they speak to everyone. They do one of these. They wave and Toya walks right past Quad um, and personally um, hugs Contessa. Her and Contessa somehow have gotten in a great space. She does not personally acknowledge Anila. Um, so Anila is not only feeling some way, but Quad is as well because she was like... Um, here come Toya tack, tacky ass. She doesn't even greet me in my own home and she brings a tag along. I would have been feeling some type of way too. I extended the invitation to bring you at my home, but even, but let's keep it a book, Quad only extended the invitation so she could have a reason to shit on her and confront her. But at the same token, I invited you to my home. The least you can do is come over and greet me. And then on top of that, you brought somebody with you and didn't even tell me you was bringing somebody with you. So the whole thing is just already starting off on the wrong foot because quiet intentions weren't genuine and Toya came already on the defense ready. So Kawhi says to Carrie, Carrie, I haven't seen you in many of years. You know, they didn't get along season one. And she was like, I didn't know you were coming. <laughs> and I hate when people do that to folks. You know, it ain't her fault that she didn't, that you didn't know she was coming or whatever the case may be. It's just like, if you don't want her, tell her to leave. Don't do all that shady ass, passive aggressive ass bullshit to somebody and put them on front street in front of a group of people. It's embarrassing. So Car Carrie was like, we never really got to know each other. You have a beautiful home. I have a home just like this that I bought as an investment, but yours has an elevator. Mine doesn't. Now you can sense a little tiny, teeny weeny bit of shade in that by saying, you know, like I bought a house like this as an investment. Meanwhile, this is your main home, but I have investment properties, sis. Like don't get above yourself. <laughs> but uh, Quad came back with the, yeah, that's a $30,000 difference. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, Quad. So, um, Quad then has the ladies twerk and Groot and Simone look like two blind mice, child. I was like, woo, child, if med school was the thing for y'all because y'all would have never made it on the pole. So the teams do their little routines and everybody looked like they was on American Bandstand and not soul trained. Can none of them hoes dance. So they all go up on the fourth floor where Quad's uh, balcony is. And Simone tells Toya that she's going to have to clear the air before they leave as they go up on the elevator. And Toya was like, shit, I'm good. I got my Patron with me. But that's really not a good thing. It's really a bad thing because Toya on Patron means Toya going to turn up. Turn up, Toya. Toya turn up is on the way. So on the balcony, Toya asked Simone, would she be able to explain to Groot why she's always grouchy? And Toya was like, mm, not right now. Uh... And I was like, who the fuck is Jackie that she got to explain anything to anyway? So Contessa was like, I'm glad Toy is here. And Toy was like, thank you, Contessa. And I'm really happy that they're back fine right now. So Kwai was like, I have, I gave her the option because she had never been to my home. I'm happy you all are here. Even Carrie, even though I didn't invite you, girl. And I was like, <sighs> What is the point of that? What is the point? We've already acknowledged that you didn't personally invite her. Like, I hate when people do that shit. So Carrie was like, I'm here to support Toya because she has been feeling, because uh, she hasn't been feeling supported from some of the ladies. So Toya goes to speak, but before she could even speak, and it seemed like she was about to be apologetic towards Quad or say something of some type of significant because she had a very soft voice when she said it. But before she can even get out what she was about to say, Heavenly cuts her off and was like, Toya been talking about everybody house, including yours, Quad, and I'm sorry for that. And I was like, I cannot stand this lady. I cannot stand this fucking trout mouth, goddamn catfish looking ass woman. Can we please throw her back in the Mississippi River? So Toy was like, why are you jumping in it? And Heavenly was like, you, uh, do you want to pull the receipts? She said it was little and some bullshit. And I was like, oh my God, I just wish somebody was still on her one good time. So Toy and her confessional was like, when I joined Cecil Live, she was tipsy talking about herself. She was like, when I said a bullshit ass apartment, she visibly, uh, she, wait a minute, when I said a bullshit ass apartment, um, and that she lived in a box, Toy was like, this is not an apartment though, like saying like, this is obvious, it's obvious that, you know, I wasn't in my right mind when I said it, but at the same time, you was being shady and you meant that shit, and so stand on that shit and apologize, so Kwai was like, 
it's the only place I've lived. And Heavenly was like, and she said it. And Toy was like, mind your fucking business. Toy then stands up and Quiet was like, is this a bullshit ass apartment? Is this a bullshit ass apartment? They all up in each other face arguing and yelling. And Toy was like, you full of shit. I ain't been nothing but a friend to you every fucking time, Quiet. Or whatever. You know, they've had their issues in the past where they have gone back and forth. They into it. They not into it or whatever. So Toya says to Heavenly, and you a bitch. <laughs> Heavenly was like, you get this dumb bitch out of here then. Lisa Nicole was like, Toya, just say I'm sorry. And I was like, you're right, but shut up. <laughs> so, um... Uh, Heavenly then comes back on the balcony and says to Jackie, I ain't got nothing to do with this, Jackie. So how was your day? And I was like, if you ain't got nothing to do with it, then why did you start this shit off? And I was like, this is what I don't like about Heavenly. She likes to stir the pot and start shit, but then act like she ain't did nothing. Oh, I cannot stand her. It's great for television, but not for real life. Because she would have been got her ass kicked. So Quad follows Toya down the steps as Toya's leaving out. And Toya was like, I ain't did nothing to your punk ass since the day I met your ass. And Quad was like, lying ass bitch, fake ass bitch. <laughs> Toya was like, all these fucking steps, it is a fucking apartment. <laughs> So then Kwai was like, she's a faker. She's faker than a motherfucking mannequin. Tell her to stand in the corner and pose because she's a fucking mannequin. I was like, oh, that's a cute little line. That's cute. I'm going to have to use that one. Zay. I give they little argument tens across the board on both sides. I don't really feel like one got the other one or got over on the other one. I feel like they were both evenly matched. So Carrie says, Heavenly, you're mixing it. Like, girl, like, stop it. So outside, Toya and Simone are talking, and Toya was like, I'm fine, but she's visibly not. She starts to cry. And I felt bad for Toya. I really honestly did, but at the same token, maybe she was about to apologize, but she never got the chance because of Heavenly stirring the pot or whatever. Um, but I can also feel like Toya just tired of the bullshit and everybody being fake as fuck on this goddamn show. Um, and then, like I said, with Quad, she only invited her there to to confront her and that wasn't cool it really wasn't um because you've seen this girl i don't know haven't she seen her before this yeah you've seen her at several events before this like girl so um simone was like it's obvious you're hurting and toy was like I'm, i know i'm mad like i'm truly mad and Quiet says that she could have just said she was sorry at the end of the day. So Toy was like, that bitch heavenly, that bulldog that sits in the corner and stirs the pot. And your other friend, Groot, always better. It's always better to sit back. It's not cool. And Jackie always just, just sitting there like, Groot. <laughs> I can't stand Jackie, old wooden leg ass. So Simone was like, you realize that every time you leave an event. like it, Simone was basically just like, at this point, you know how these hoes are. Why do you let them affect you? So, um, Contessa comes out and checks on her, which I really loved. And Toy was like, that other one that claims she want to be my friend, what the fuck is she doing not checking on her friend, talking about Anila? And I really thought that was fucked up that Anila didn't come out and check on her. But at the same time, Toy, you didn't even speak to her when you came in. You paid her dust. So, the whole thing is just a mess. So, Toya feels like people use her as a punching bag. Um, I don't feel like that's the case. So, Groot was like, um... I really feel like Toya hasn't been herself. Quad was like, um, Simone, can I talk to you? Simone was like, yeah, but don't yell at me. Don't point your finger at me. Don't raise up at me. And Quad was like, why would I do that? You, you're a totally different person than her. Simone was like, because you just did it. Don't let other people gas you up to be mad. And basically, she was throwing shots at Heavenly because she sees through Heavenly. And she sees exactly what Heavenly be doing. So Quad was like, Heavenly presented it to me, but Toya said it. And Simone was like, you spent last year saying we haven't been supportive of, supportive of you. We've all uh, got to own it. And I agree because Kwai showed her ass last season. That's what got her demoted. So Simone was like, in her confessional, Kwai can dish it out, but she can't take it. And I agree. Um, so Simone was like, you know, we can't mend friendships if we're not even opening to listen. Show that you care about Toya and let me apologize for being loud because her neighbors was out on the balcony watching them film. You know, they was getting the goods. Um, and then the episode pretty much went off. Um, it's just a hodgepodge of foolishness. I feel like no one is really right in the situation. I feel like with all of the... Um, beef that's going on with the ladies I feel like in each instance both 
of the parties have points. So I really don't feel like one is more right than the other. I just think it's a hodgepodge of mess, honestly. Um, so let me know what you guys thought about tonight's episode. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe. Also, you guys, make sure that you check out my new episode of Spill the Tea that's up. I have a new behind the scenes tea video that's up. I reviewed Star's new show, Run the World. It's about four black women trying to make it in New York City. It's a very stylish and sexy new show. Make sure you check it out. I also did a review on Ready to Love, um, Growing Up Hip Hop LA, and Loving Hip Hop Couples Therapy. And me and um, Sheridan early this week did a whole video on the Portia Williams fiasco so make sure you check out all of those videos you guys also make sure you cop my 40th birthday box the link is down below in the comments i mean in the description box i love you guys so much thank you for watching this video and i'll see you on the next one bye